Hello there, Reef friends. Welcome back to Craft Aquatic. I'm Matt G. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at this new leather-only Nano Reef Aquarium. This tank is something different from the primarily blue spectrum mixed and SPS heavy reef aquariums we generally feature on this channel. So let's get right to it. This tank used to be our one and only planted freshwater aquarium, but I really needed a home for these leathers, so here we are today. Here's our 120 gallon mixed reef. A link to videos about this setup in the description below. You can see that the lighting spectrum is quite a bit more in the blue range in this larger mixed reef aquarium. And in the evenings, the spectrum switches to an even deeper blue, very much in contrast to our 10 gallon rimless leather display. The wider spectrum is one of the reasons why I enjoyed having the planted tank. The all leather reef sits nicely on this old wooden sideboard along with a few plants and terrariums for a splash of nature. It's one of those reef displays that you almost don't notice at first, but there are so many rewarding details once you do. So for instance, we'll start with this beautiful weeping willow leather sarcophyton. These polyps will extend almost twice as long as this and add an almost torch-like motion to the overall display. This coral was purchased from a local vendor who received it from Jake Adams. It's really something special and deserves so much better than just being tucked away underneath the rack in my propagation system. This coral is one of the main reasons why I decided to set up this display tank. Directly above the weeping willow is this tree-like green Palau Nephthia. If you have watched some of my other videos, you may know that this coral is also in the 120 gallon mixed reef towards the back. Under blue LEDs, it's a deep green glowing color unlike the typical Fiji or Tonga Nephthia, which has a fleshier pink color. Moving down the sand bed, I did cheat a little and included the stony coral, also a few mushroom coral in the display. This is a Cycloceras, one of the coral that has been in my care for over 20 years now. It's kind of cool how it reproduces once in a while, popping off random baby plates that quickly grow into full-size colonies. This looks like a little bit of marine algae, but is in fact a sponge. This was given to me by a local hobbyist. He said, it tends to grow fast, but mine hasn't really grown at all in the year that I've had it. I'm hoping it will in this new setup with the higher nutrients. I will be adding various macro algaes to complement the leather coral in the future, which means I will need to dose iron, nitrates, phosphates, among other things. Here we have a bit of GSP right in the live rock. Won't mind if that grows around at all. This is one of those green mushroom coral I mentioned. I believe it's a rhodactus with a slight bit of bounce. It came from a local fish store. I'm hoping it will do well in this setup. Much of the rock work in here is old Tonga branch that I've had for at least 12 years. I've kept it wet and cycling in a live rock tank in the basement. That and dosing a tablespoon of Microbacter 7 really helped with cycling this display tank quickly. I do see an ugly stage in this tank's future. I'll report back on that in future videos. Speaking of old displays though, here we have a little bit of Groob's Gargonian that came from Randy's display tank. He is a local reefer who's had a tank set up for something like 30 years. Please do correct me if it's more than that. Either way, it's so one of the coral we keep that is testament to the robust nature of coral that have been in the hobby for decades. In this shot, we see a bit of that older live rock starting to show some algae growth and another discosoma mushroom coral that gets to be around eight inches in diameter when fully open. And down towards the bottom, another type of sarcophyton spreading out around the live rock. The leathers in my display um, are generally an intense green under blue LEDs, which really helps in a display like this where there are minimal blue LEDs to draw out that fluorescent pigment. Behind the aquarium, I keep a nice little mangrove that I purchased from Julian Sprung at a reef of Palooza. It is currently in a cup of fresh water. If I were to keep it in the salt water, I'd need a much more powerful light directly above the mangrove, which would raise my overall power in the leather display. It's really easy to grow these in a cup of fresh water in indirect sunlight. The light I am using was designed for freshwater planted aquariums. It is the Twin Star 450S and puts out a spectrum of 400 to 700 nanometers at 1750 lumens, around 35 watts max. That is plenty of power for this leather tank. In fact, I need to ramp it down a bit to hit that 50 to 80 power range that I'm going for. I use an Apogee MQ510 to measure the power so I know what it is. I have to keep an eye on the metal footing to make sure there is no oxidation. The drivers are mainly 
mainly red, white, and green with a bit of blue. I purchased an optional Twin Star controller which acts as a timer, intensity controller, and ramps the light up and down over a period of 5 minutes. Only issue I have with this controller is it loses its settings as the power goes out. My goal is to go simple. This setup really helps to keep coral that are easy and low demand. The power head I chose was this Hydro Corellia Nano which puts out around 400 gallons per hour. Corellia pumps are really gentle and they're flow pattern. Uh, the Cobalt Heater is a 50 watt version. Generally they are reliable but I did go with an ink bird with heating and cooling features for increased redundancy and set the heater itself to a slightly higher temperature. And for additional water movement, I installed this Fluval 20 hang on back filter. I will not be using a protein skimmer with this setup, so I'll run filter floss in the HOB and just wring it out by hand a few times a month. Again, I'm going for high but controlled nutrients in this tank. It does get hot in the northeast in the summer, so I do run fans for evaporative cooling above all my reef systems. This is a nice compact unit that puts out plenty of air to cool this 10 gallon rimless reef. It's called the Up Mini Cooling Fan and I got it off eBay. I always place some sort of protective barrier underneath my aquariums. This is a sheet of diffusion that someone was thrown out of work so I grabbed it. It's working great for a splash barrier. I wanted to talk a little bit about the substrate that I'm using this reef. This is the same stuff that I use for the triple nano base setup. Link below in the description if you want to see that video. It seems to be perfect porosity and grain size for smaller displays like this. It does go through a slight ugly stage but not too bad. It came dry and was the 10 pound bag of dry carob sea oregano. Lately, it seems there has been so much discussion about using sand or going bare bottom. I think both have their applications. In a system like this where you really don't mind higher nutrients and want things to cycle a bit quicker, it's an advantage to use some sort of substrate. Personally, I think reef generally looks better with a bit of sand. Using a smaller grain size makes it easier to remove and replace if you want to if there are any nutrient buildup, but sand is the way to go for me. So that is it for this video. Thank you for watching Craft Aquatic. I just wanted to take a quick moment to ask you to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the Craft Aquatic channel if you haven't already. This channel has been up for three years now, has released dozens of entertaining and helpful reef related videos. Please check them out. We could really use a boost in subscribers to motivate even more. Thank you for watching. Enjoy your tanks and I'll see you in the next one.